Security agents are collaborating with bandits, says a popular Islamic cleric, Ahmad Gumi. And Nigeria is a poor country and needs to borrow to develop infrastructure, says the President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan. This is Plus Politics, and I am Osao Gie Ogboma. Welcome once again to Plus Politics. The Nigerian army and a popular Islamic cleric, Ahmad Gumi, have uh, disagreed over the latter's allegations that security agents are collaborating with bandits. The cleric stated that the bandits had been able to access uh, assorted weapons that they used against Nigeria due to cooperation uh, of uh, certain security agents. He also attributed the incessant banditry and headsmen attacks across the country to tribal wars. While Gumi, accusing, while Gumi rather is accusing the government at all levels of taking sides in the raging attacks on Nigerian communities. Joining us to discuss this is uh, Harriet Chimezie, a security analyst. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Good evening and thanks for having me. All right, I'm going to start with uh, talking about the role of Sheikh Ahmad Gumi um, in all of these conversations concerning banditry. Uh, some people have criticized it and said it seems like he is uh, acting as a mediator. Uh, do you believe that you know he's simply playing his role in trying to bring peace? Oh well, um, as for me, he's um, he is also a cleric, and being in his position, I I don't think he can just speak without having facts. And um, also, I strongly believe that he has some evidences. So if he's saying that the security agencies have hands in what is happening in the insecurity state of the nation, and then should give us evidence and call names. There should not be, um, it should not just be a hearsay. It should give us names, and it should be facts and not assumptions. Because um, seriously, at this stage, where Nigeria is right now, we shouldn't be assuming anything because what we want is solution. So whoever that is coming up to say and that security agencies are uh, behind all of what happens in Nigeria as a nation, it should give us names because we are, we are restless, we are scared, we don't know what is going to happen tomorrow in, to our children, to our generation. So the issue of insecurity in Nigeria is beyond just mere assumptions. That we should be specific. And there should be a, a it should not just be an, a seated down assumption. Somebody should be able to say, this person is the one doing this. And let the justice prevail. All right, and I um... think that is what would help us in this in this uh, scenario here. Okay, I, I want to, you know, remind uh, you also, if you remember not long ago, a couple of years ago actually, uh, uh, T.Y. Danjuma also made similar claims, you know, of a collusion between uh, the security agencies and, you know, bandits, you know, insurgents, killers, whoever they are. Um, how shocking, you know, is it? And do you think, you know, as a security expert, do you think that uh, the only way, or would you agree that the only way that bandits uh, sh could have been so successful with carrying out their attacks in the last couple of years, uh, leading to the loss of uh, hundreds or maybe even thousands of uh, lives in the last couple of years and uh, displa displacement of people, kidnapping and all of that. Do you think that the only way they could have done that is if they had some uh, collusion and assistance from security agents? Oh well, um, T.Y. Danjuma, we, we know it's, um, it's, one of the, it's one of the senior citizens in the nation, must have come up with this years ago. And uh, again, I'm, I'm a strong believer that um, old people 
there is no how the rat in the house will go out except there is a rat inside the inside that shows you the way so these guys that carry these arms they are not trained they are they are illiterate and they they cannot just operate uh from no sense from nowhere i think they should operate from a direction and so in my own uh, point of uh in my own personal point of view i think there should be and there is a very strong backing they have that is so strong that make them to do what they do everywhere but until we have uh until we have evidences and we have this in a in a collaborative effort with both the stakeholders and the government i think it's just a mere assumption because um, we need to have a definite evidences that will come up and that will happen that will make us to know that yes we are we are we are there because this insecurity has to be handled from the root cause from the roots not just a uh, periphery it has to be handled from the roots once we are able to get to the root cause of what uh, brings about insecurity in Nigeria, then we are near to the solution. But if we just keep assuming that, assuming and we, we will just end up in assumption, and at the end of the day, we will never have a solution. That's what I think. Uh, the army of, has, of course, responded uh, to these allegations and uh, said that they are false. You know, and also said that they, uh, you know, are damning on the confidence of uh, soldiers, uh, you know, who are fighting the war and some of all of that. There's also news reports that Ahmad Gumi may have been uh, picked up by the DSS. Um, but what more would you want from the Nigerian army uh, to defend itself uh, from these type of allegations? Well, for me, what I want from the armies and the security agency in, 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 in totality is to be proactive and to be on the spot to do the needful. And also, the, I was opportune to work in Damboa, in Meduguri, in Chibok, in 2017, 18, and 19. Um, it's a transmission project. I, I, I went to Askira over Chibok specifically. What I see there, I don't see a war that we cannot defeat if we go straight to fight it with that passion that this is our country. If, I'm, if myself as a woman can go to that area to work and finish this work and come back. So I think the army, what I want from them is to be given an enabling environment to do the needful. And they should be given a cooperative, a cooperative uh, the, the, the bureaucracy in action taking should be removed. There should not be a, a long bureaucracy in the, in the issue of decision making or taking or action when there is a need to. So these things causes um, us to lose missing action during the act of fighting insecurity in Nigeria. So if, if there would be a need for a straight instruction uh, maybe as soon as you see the enemy's attack or something like that, without any waiting for an order from anywhere, I think. And again, there should be high intelligence in the Nigerian army, talking about information. Maybe the information system uh, is not well coordinated. They should increase more on their information and on their operation, so that probably we should involve uh, more sophisticated weapon in our information system. I think that would help very, very well uh, in curbing insecurity and on their job. Well, that uh, simply also means uh, better funding for security agencies, uh, including the Nigerian army, um, because of course with better funding, you know, they should be able to get better intelligence gathering equipment and some of all of that. Um, but that's a totally different conversation. You know, I, I also want you to, if you can, speak on um, the importance of the army being able to weed out, if they exist, elements within the army that might be sabotaging their efforts. And like Ahmad Gumi and, of course, uh, Tiwa Danjima has said, working in hands with uh, the, the, the bandits. Um, how important is that and how do you think they may be able to do that? Oh, well... Um 
I think uh, sincerely the most difficult kind of enemies to fight are those within. Yes. Because, uh, take example, if you have, um, if you have in the family uh, one of your sons as an enemy, it will be as difficult as, uh, as, as a needle in an eye to pass through for you to discover that that same son is your enemy. And so it's a very uh, difficult one. But notwithstanding, in my own personal opinion, and as a security consultant, I think there are measures that can be put to catch or to get the people that are saboteurs amongst the Nigerian army. Because I'm, I'm sure, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that they have, uh, they have measures they can put on ground to be able to catch these uh, saboteurs among them that are deterring their works. And if they apply these measures, I sincerely think that uh, more successes will be recorded because they are doing their best. They are trying. They are trying all they can. But I'm sure with the new government we have now in the army, they should put some some measures inside in place so that the saboteurs can be dictated. And if that is dictated, uh, a measure should not be taken irrespective of who the person is, irrespective of the caliber or the, the, the position or who he knows. The necessary actions should be taken, and that is the way to go. Oh, we would yeah. always like to, of course, give kudos to Nigerian uh, security agencies, the Army, Air Force, uh, and of course the Navy, um, including Civilian and JTF, for the uh, sacrifices that they've had to, uh, um, you know, they've uh, given um, in the last few years, the last decade actually, to en ensure that Nigeria remains a safe country. Um, but there is certain angles that have been spoken about multiple times, and uh, it's one of the things that Ahmad Gumi had mentioned, and that is the availability of assorted weapons to these bandits. These weapons very likely are not locally produced, and so there has to be a channel through which they assess these weapons. Um, what's your, you know, your take on how you know, we can stop these characters from assessing these weapons? Um, first, our, our borders have to be checked. Um, Nigeria is a blessed country. I've been privileged to work in the 19 northern states of the Federation, the north, the four north, as far as Kebi, as far as the far Kebi, Sokoto, Meduguri. Now, from my experience in this work, I've, I've discovered that we, we are, we, our borders are porous. So, the first thing for us to do is to control the movement of the arms in our borders. And also, the next thing we need to do is to, uh, there are so many ways to fight insecurity. First, we need to, um, first of all, install checks on all the arms that comes into the country. Because as it stands now, our borders are porous. People can just uh, bring in true Castina, through Kebi State, through the far north, through the, any part of the country where it's deserted. They could just come in. So if we can put a good checks on all these borders, I think um, the, it will go a long way, to go a long way to control the movement of arms within the country. All right. I'm yes. going to you know, now bring in uh, Catch Ononuju, uh, who's just joined us. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Ononuju. Thank you for having me. Great to have I'm you. Happy to be here with you. Good to have you in Plus Politics. We're having a uh, you know quick discussion on allegations um, by uh, Sheikh Ahmad Gumi concerning you know, the Nigerian army. He has uh, claimed that they are working uh, with the bandits, um, and of course he's mentioned the availability of uh, assorted weapons that the bandits uh, have. Um, and, you know, I mentioned earlier that it's not the first time we're hearing of such. Uh, T General T.Y. Danjuma had made uh, those uh, similar allegations a couple of years ago. Um, how shocking, you know, is this? And what is the likelihood 
that this really might be happening? Well, thank you. It's not an issue of likelihood. It's happening, and uh, it is happening by uh, strength of the president. The president, President Buhari, it's a complicity in what's going on. President Buhari is the one who appoints the service chiefs. And it also based on the kind of instructions that he gives the service chiefs that they have all this while stayed hands and allowed the Fulani bandits to kill free. Just take a look. No single Fulani bandit had been arrested or prosecuted for the killings. So uh, to believe Buhari is to be foolish. President Buhari is fundamentally dishonest, deceitful, and as I said before, irredeemably incompetent in managing our diversity. These things are not jokes. Uh, Gumi himself is part and parcel of what's going on. The soldiers collude simply because President Buhari told them to be easy with the Fulani bandits. And that's why the whole of the country believes that Buhari is a state sponsor of terrorism by virtue of his easy ways with the Fulani bandits and the Fulani Hezmen militia. And this is why all of us believe if the people are arrested, Buhari will give the instruction that nobody should be tried. If you take them to police, instructions will come from above and they will be released. That's why the entire country do not trust him. You could see what they did here in the East, brought down their, their traveling uh, 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 theater of violence, which they called unknown government. Those were all part of it. So for us, we've never had a president like this, a president who connives, actively connives with foreign bandits to kill Nigerians. All right. uh, I have never Mr. seen Nona anything Drew. like we had it before. It is unprecedented. Sandra, you kindly hold on. In well, um, I understand it's your perspective, you know, but it, it's a pretty wild statement to, you know, make that the president is colluding with bandits. Um, you know, you've described it, you know, in your own way, uh, but I, I think we should also uh, not just throw out uh, such strong allegations. Um, I want to also believe, and like I said it earlier, that we give kudos to the army. Uh, for the efforts that they've made with regards uh, fighting insurgency and fighting banditry. Um, um, but do you, don't you think, because every now and then you, you must also follow news reports and hear that 21 bandits were killed or 11 or 12 or, you know, dozens of them were killed, you know, in, in strikes by the army and, and uh, all of that. Um, don't you think that it is simply just, you know, um, insiders sabotaging the efforts of the Nigerian army and at the same time, um, inadequacies with regards funding that may have made this war uh, to exist for so long? No, no, no. You know, the Chinese have a saying, the Chinese addict says, when a fish rots, it starts from the head. He, uh, uh, constitutionally, the service chiefs should have sworn their oath to the constitution. But as it is in Nigeria, the service chiefs swear their oath to President Buhari. President Buhari is the reason. I'm not uh, making allegations. No, I'm telling you how it is. I have had time to speak to generals, and they told me if President Buhari is serious about fighting uh, this thing, he should just give an instruction. Two weeks. Every bandit, every Fulani headsman, every Fulani in the bush, hand over your weapons. After that, two weeks, anybody seen with weapons anywhere would now be treated as a hostile person and be shot at. That will end it all. But he now asked us to submit our guns. We did submit our guns 2017, 2016, 18, and suddenly it's only the Fulanese who come in from Mali, Cote d'Ivoire, Central African Republic, that come here with their guns. And what do we have? mayhem all over the country and you can see it started in Borono. they called it uh, Boko Haram it came down to the northwest they called it Fulani Bandits Militia it come down to north central and the southwest they called it Fulani Health Militia 
Today, it came down to the East, Old Eastern Nigeria, and we call it unknown government. Yet, it's all because of how very lackadaisical the president has handled security. If it is not him, how come nobody has been arrested? How come nobody has been prosecuted? How come the Fuladines who do these things, not one single one has been held? So if nobody is touched and those who are held are asked to be released with instructions from above, everything stops at the table of the president. That's why I tell you, this is not, I'm not just making an allegation, no. You can talk the way you talk so that you can safeguard your, 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 your station. But the truth needs to be told. President Buhari's acceptance of these things is the reason why it sustains. If he has become president of Nigeria and then agree that there are no favorites you should be given to the Fulani bandits or Fulani headsmen militia, all this will stop. You cannot say that our service men don't know what they are doing. It's not true. Our police go internationally and come back with medals. Our soldiers are well known when they do peacekeeping in Liberia. Just call the name of the places. Our people are very good. Our problem is that the president, President Mohammed Buhari, tolerates these things. He's also part of the slow motion civil war by the Fulani against the rest of the country. I thought by now the Fulani would have made their case why this has been this bad, why they are aggressive against other people. They've not done that. Instead, they want to cunningly change it as if it is full of versus Igbo. If the Igbos are not happy at the violence and the impunity and the weaponization of nepotism, you don't turn against them that they are against you. know, I understand the Igbos do not allow the Fulani to have their way easily. And the same thing is now beginning to occur in the southwest with the Yorubas. The Fulani should stop because what they are doing is not sustainable. Why do I say this? They don't have numbers. The day the country will turn against them, they could suffer genocide. So they should stop all these things. There is no way in what they are doing. What they are doing is not sustainable. Please, President Buhari should, for once, show dignity, show that he's intelligent, and stop supporting this aggression against indigenous people across Nigeria. As far as I'm concerned, the insecurity is as a function of President Buhari's strategy to try to use his people to seize land everywhere. It will not work. It will never work. They don't have the numbers. They will never succeed. All right, um, Katrin on the Jeep. Um, you know, of course, we hope that there would ne not be uh, anything as uh, far as a genocide, uh, like you also mentioned. Um, I want us to, I think we have just a few minutes left in this discussion. I want you to also speak with regards to uh, Ahmad Gumi. There's a report that I had seen earlier that the DSS may have uh, picked him up or arrested him um, after the statements that he made concerning collusion between the army and bandits. Um, how do you expect that this would play out? And um, what's your assessment of the role that he has played in the last few months or years? Well, the role he played is the role we have seen. He said privately, uh, when I inquired why this is going on, he said, well, if to get the Fulanese away from killing houses in the Northwest, you can nab it to them that they should target those who are not Muslims. That was why he told the, the bandits that their problem are soldiers who are Christians. And we think that is not the way to go. When that happened, the army did not do a thing. And now he is preaching that uh, we should allow the bandits to seize land. Whereas we know that the main reason for the Fulani aggression at countrywide is land. Because Buhari had begged us for land to resettle these refugees from Mali, Central African Republic, Cote d'Ivoire, and other parts of Africa in Nigeria. We Nigerians said, no, don't forget, our people are historically emotional about land. Buhari asked for land, calling it grazing reserve. Nigerians refused. He asked for land, calling it uh, cow's colony. Nigerians refused. He wanted to consolidate underground surface water plus six kilometers of land, embankment land. Nigerians refused. Now, he's desperately asking that uh, we look at gazettes done in the 50s and 60s 
Gazettes are not, these are regional gazettes. Regional gazettes, when they clash with the constitution, the constitution becomes supreme. So I don't know who advises Buhari. I think whoever advises him, or he's just desperate, he wants land to resettle Fulani refugees, nobody will give them land. So that's what you see in Gumi now preaching uh, that uh, his Fulani bandits should be allowed to become custodians of land, to become watchmen over land. They are desperate for land. The other day, the same Gumi went to President Bassanjo, asking President Bassanjo to join Gumi's campaign to secure land and resettle the Fulanese. No, these Fulanese are not Nigerians. It is easy to bring them in and get someone like Pantami to infuse their name into data bank. It is not easy giving them land. Nobody is willing to give land. They've been to the uh, Southwest, the Yorubas refused. They've been to the Southeast, the Igbos refused. They went to Benue State committing ethnic cleansing. We saw what they did in Plateau State. 58 villages are sacked in Rio, Breckett, Nadi, and just now. You can see the sustained ethnic cleansing against Zigbagi and the Adara in Kaduna. There is also the same war against the Bachama in Newman, in Adamawa. All over the country, the Fulani are seeing land, and President Buhari is advancing that by seeking to get this land through all sorts of ways. Now, I'm happy uh, Professor Sage has told him that even if there were gazettes that have been overtaken by the Land Use Act in the Constitution, the Constitution is supreme, far more supreme to any gazette. All right. So I it's think on President on Buhari should stop all this, get all this in high horse, and understand that the only way he can resettle the Fulani is to make sure he deals with the other regional leaders try to implement the 2015 peace agreement in Mali. Let them stay in Mali. They can't leave Mali and come here. We All right, don't Mr. have Nandu. plans for them. They can't leave Cote d'Ivoire and come here. Let them go back to their country. All right, Let thank you very much. Mr. Nonoju, uh, you obviously have uh, a lot to get off your chest. Um, but thank you very much. And uh, also to uh, Harriet Chimezier, security consultant. Thank you both for joining us this evening and for speaking with us. Mr. Nandiju, thank you very much uh, once again for sharing thank your you thoughts with us. You know, a uh, pretty you. tough uh, conversation here, but thanks for joining us. And of course, uh, we'll take a short break now. And when we return, President of the Senate, Ahmad Lawan, reveals the state of Nigeria's economy. We'll be right back.